So good afternoon and thanks again for coming. Uh, so after the presentation of Salah on the cosmopolitanism and uh, Afropolitan, uh, which was a very important for us to, uh, to underline the fact that uh, the multiplicity of, uh, of centers of contemporary art today. And then, uh, as Hur mentioned this morning, <coughs> this afternoon, sorry, that we, uh, today we will be presenting four organizations. The four organizations is an, uh, an important factor to observe that they are not uh, state-funded or city-funded, uh, as many of the biennials or triennials uh, used uh, are. And uh, actually, I would say rather they have a kind of distance with the formal uh, uh, state structures. And uh, so the presentations will be in different format. The first format, the first part is a conversation between two very close friends of mine, Christine Tama, the director of uh, Ashkel Alwen, the Lebanese uh, Association for Plastic Art uh, that organized the Homework Forum on, art, on uh, Cultural Practices, and Khalil Rabah, uh, the uh, artist and uh, the, director, the artistic director of Riwak Biennial, Biennial in Ramallah. <coughs> and uh, of course, Binali, sorry, in Ramallah, that uh, one of the important things that happened in the last edition of Riwak Biennial that is still ongoing, uh, that Khalil decided to, to, that the Biennial takes uh, place over the period of the, over two years of activities, and part of the activities were uh, actually took place in Beirut uh, in collaboration with Homeworks, with Ashkel Alwan. Uh, Ashkel Alwan hosted part of the Riwak Biennial in Beirut, which is a different city. So this challenge of uh, time and place was very interesting to observe and also uh, interesting to untangle and to talk about. So, uh, and I think the, f the best is to start by giving a kind of brief of how you initiated this organization, because of course the four organizations we are, we are presenting today are mainly artist initiatives, artist or curators initiatives, and uh, so this uh, kind of first step to understand the context that you tell us a bit more, how did you initiate either the Homeworks Forum or the Rewalk Biennial? So, who will start? When did you start Homeworks? 2002, I know by heart. Yeah. So, and when was the first edition of Rewalk Biennial? Uh, it was uh, initiated in 2005. So, Christine can start first. <laughs> <laughs> You're older. It's older. <laughs> uh, hi. Yes, of course. Yes, and uh, happy to be amongst two friends and um, which we discuss this all the time, I think, but we're just moving the discussion now to a third place and um, started homeworks in um, Ashkel Alwan in 1993 uh, with a group of friends in Beirut and they're mostly artists and writers. Um, started homeworks program which is a, an annual study program in 2010 and uh, it attracts uh, participants from all over the world to come and study in Beirut uh, we give them scholarships and uh, we give them uh, you know a one-year program so this year for example we have uh, three participants from Egypt Two from Palestine, we have uh, uh, one girl from uh, Yemen, we have one uh, uh, participant from Ukraine, one from Austria, one from Germany, uh, we have one from Jordan, one from Turkey, and f one from the United States. I am listing all of this not to bore you, just to say one thing that we started in the 90s, there was an urgency which came from a certain situation, which is the war structure, and uh, the war structure which, at least for me, um, I am now 51 years old. When I started Ashkel Alwan, uh, I was 28 years old, and East Beirut and West Beirut were completely closed. And so 
actually, I, I was one of the people who were reclaiming the city, like all my friends, like all my colleagues, and actually what gathered us is this collectivity. So it wasn't a structure, it wasn't universalism, it wasn't professionalism, it was friendship and collectivity, and believing in a cause to change things. That was the 90s where we are now actually talking in our study program about set up situations, institutions. Why is that? Because we all started in the 90s. We started in, a, in the 90s from an urgency to change the city, to change Beirut. Um, I'm not gonna talk about Lebanon because Actually, my work is basically is interested in cities and people who are in the cities, wherever they come from. So I'm not interested in the notion of nationalism or who's a newcomer, like we have two million and a half refugees now, or uh, the displacement issue. We have 300,000 Palestinians, which are not nationalized yet. I am interested to talk about this city from this perspective, having two million refugees, Syrians, 300,000 Palestinians. So uh, this is where we started in the 90s. The discussion is very viable today because actually it's very interesting to look at the context of Beirut where you have nine museums coming up. And Tare talked in his introduction about being stuck and stranded in the crux of the art market and actually being part of this sometimes I have all of these internal discussions and reflections whether I am actually one of the perpetrators who actually contributed par excellence for this art market and I try to revise all of these uh, strategies. Sometimes it doesn't work for me because we're already hijacked. So what does it mean to have nine museums and we as associations, um, not to victimize ourselves, we're not, but being struck and in conflict with development everybody wants to support refugees, nobody wants to support art, then being stranded in resources where donors in Lebanon suddenly understood their authority, the extent of their authority and the realm of what they can and how they can affect art, and the international curatorial or the international art scene which is coming to Beirut to compete with us, to take resources back to whatever we want to all of these big institutions. So this is a very brief context of how we are going to maneuver now with being taking everybody doesn't want to support art but want to support refugees and donors who are interested in opening museums we don't know why, and foundations, and collections that are all about speculation, and the international scene at large. So I'll leave it to Khalil now. Uh, maybe, um, maybe it's worth uh, saying that uh, you started Ashkel Alwan after the end of the war that lasted for 20 years, right? So the civil oh. war in Lebanon started from the 75, right? It lasted uh, so. for I don't know how, and I'm, for me, like um, I wouldn't really put yeah. a, si a kind of a rupture. start and uh, an end. But but you started in '93, and then things developed. You made different projects in different parts of the city, and you started homeworks as a kind of an event that takes place every two years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes it takes like three, three years. years and uh, homeworks, and you organized the last one that was number six in 2013, Yeah. right? And you are preparing for number seven that will take care this year in November. Yes. Yeah. So, Khalil, and the Rewag Biennial, tell us a bit, how, do, how did you start the Rewag Biennial and... Uh, 
Um, and tell us a bit about also the Rewak. Rewak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll start with the, briefly with Rewak. Uh, uh, Rewak was established in 1991. Uh, that was uh, two years before the Palestinian Authority uh, uh, entered uh, the occupied areas. Um, it was one of the institutions, the NGOs, that uh, were initiated by individuals who uh, felt who were compelled to do something with culture in general. Uh, Ruach in particular uh, 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 where it was dealing and still is dealing with the architectural heritage in Palestine. Uh, what Ruach started with the first uh, a survey of uh, historic buildings in Palestine, which uh, was never done by Palestinians. It was done by the, uh, the British. So it took a 10 year period to do a survey of uh, uh, the historic buildings in Palestine, and they surveyed and uh, compiled um, the registry of historic buildings in Palestine, which is uh, uh, about uh, 50,320 uh, 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 architectural uh, buildings. Uh, and it was initiated the first time that um, uh, uh, this kind of thing was initiated by Palestinians themselves. And uh, moreover, you know, but uh, I want to talk more about the general outlook of, of Ruach and uh, uh, the involvement they, uh, they've been involved with conservation, in, mainly in the ruler uh, Palestine. Uh, uh, the survey reflects about uh, uh, 420 villages, uh, and they we're talking about West Bank, Jerusalem, and West Bank and Gaza, uh, aside from uh, occupied uh, 48 uh, territories. Uh, it, uh, and that includes uh, 12 uh, districts uh, in Palestine. Uh, Ruach has been um, involved mainly with conservation revitalization of uh, these historic uh, centers. And uh, uh, in, nine, in 2004, uh, I was approached by Ruach uh, to uh, sort of um, introduce to the public what Ruach has been doing, mainly the conservation projects and revitalization projects. And uh, they wanted to do a sort of an open house uh, uh, type of event where uh, a one day event could introduce people, the locals mainly, to uh, the, uh, the work of Ruach. And, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> and my suggestion was instead of bringing uh, people to the building of Ruach and uh, do a presentation like we are doing right here, you know, uh, how about if we go to the villages where the work is being done there? And uh, I realized at that time that uh, this is going to take more than one event. So um, I suggested something like, how about if we do a Biennale? So it's, it's going to take more than one time, more than one year. It's going to take more than a few years. So let's do something as a Biennale. And the idea of a Biennale here was not thinking of the conventional way of a biennale in terms of let's do an event that includes exhibitions, but rather, that, uh, rather of introducing people and the local uh, uh, public to the works that is taking place in the villages. <laughs> and basically, I myself was very, very uh, uh, amazed by the kind of richness that Palestine has in terms of architectural heritage, especially in the rural Palestine. And little did I know that uh, they took it seriously. And uh, uh, the first event was uh, quite successful. The second one it became sort of uh, a curated type of an event. The third event, uh, we involved the, Palest the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian Authority for the first time uh, took, uh, um, the, uh, became aware of its responsibility to protect architectural heritage in Palestine. Uh, the, uh, the theme for the third edition of the Work United, which took place in 2009, uh, was uh, 50 villages. And the idea was to, uh, if we protect 50 villages in Palestine, we would protect 50% of the most important architectural uh, sites, ruler sites in Palestine. Uh, uh, what's worth noting here is that what is remaining of the architectural 
heritage in Palestine, in these villages, is as, uh, it's the same amount of what has been destroyed by Israel since 48. So the idea is if we protect now 50% of what is left, uh, this could be a way to salvage uh, uh, quite an important aspect of the architectural heritage. Of course, art uh, got in the way, uh, exhibitions got in the way, and uh, little did we know that um, uh, uh, we... Renovated sites as uh, the sites as uh, venues for the biennial some, well, the sometimes? The way it's been developing that uh, these sites became an alternative spaces to mobilize social and political uh, things, uh, aside from the conventional art practices. Yep. No. So, uh, I mean, uh, I would like just to read something here um, uh, from, uh, basically from the vision of River, the village setting is thus in inscribed within the Ruwak uh, Biennale uh, very mandate, rather than serving as mere arenas of intervention, and that's uh, answering the, this question, the villages proactively test the artistic and political possibilities of a Biennale. In some cases, they help reimagine these possibilities from a context far removed from familiar city surroundings. So the villages became a sort of an alternative uh, spaces, to mobilize social and political activities. You mentioned something about the Palestinian Authority, and this leads us to the second uh, subject, actually, the relationship to the state or to the or power in general, because also Christine mentioned the power of the market, or the, uh, she mentioned also something new today, the power of museums, uh, or I don't know if we call it the power of the museum or power of foundations or the bourgeois, Lebanese bourgeois building museums. So how, how can you position the Riwak Biennial within the, these kind of different powers around the contemporary art event? I mean, what, what, is, what kind of relationship do you have to the state what kind of relationship do you have to the city of Ramallah? Or, the, or t yeah, tell us more. How? Well, it's interesting. Uh, to me, a state does only means, uh, 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 means one thing and one thing only. I mean, we never really had a state. We're still under occupation. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, we don't have a state. So we are not. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean uh, we, we, we make. <laughs> We state in, in our statement of the fifth edition um, uh, something of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the notions of what an exhibition or an activity um, uh, uh, engagement with the public, uh, it, it means different when uh, peop, you know, people are uh, in, uh, 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 involved with activities of this nature under occupation. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, notions of uh, 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 and, uh, cultural uh, engagement uh, under occupation. It really, uh, you know, it, it it is completely different. I mean, um, uh, if if you think about it, uh, uh, the attack on Gaza is a Bien Ali. I mean, it, it happens every two years, so is this a Biennale, you know, is this an event that happens to the user? But it, it is our reality, so um, the state, um, I mean, uh, we, uh, uh, statehood, I'm not sure, nationhood, yes. Uh. And Christine, tell us more about the homeworks in between among all these kind of power, the power of the market or the power of the museums or the state, what kind of relationship do you have to the, to the state? Do you, have, do you get any state funding, for example, from the... <laughs> would you like to keep this distance with the state? Yeah, actually, yes? actually, I would say, I mean, I hear, I so often hear people nagging about not having public funding and all of that, I think uh, I consider that we were lucky that we did not have um, this uh, kind of, um, you know, custodian relationship. And that this kind of pushed us to think uh, out of the box, to think of how to strategize, to think of how to connect with 
um, with people to think how to connect with uh, structures that are outside Lebanon, to think to connect with structures that are outside the art world. And this is something very important, at least. For me, it's been five years. I'm really interested in getting into the art world from outside the art practice, which is the civic discourse, which is about creating a civic uh, sphere. And this is where I feel uh, we need to reflect on the boundaries that at least are set by contemporary art and that are uh, simply insufficient. Contemporary art as a mode and how we kind of inflicted on it this kind of boundary of where now at least how things, how state of things have evolved, it became really insufficient and it became redundant. So in a way, if we don't really go and do this extra mile of trying to extend to, for, to other institutions which are working, for example, on domestic violence in Lebanon, on nationalization and naturalization of women who are not allowed to give their kids uh, a Lebanese passport, on LGBT rights in Lebanon, and uh, you know, all the rights of disprivileged communities. And this is really very important. If we kind of continue in this bubble, I think at least, it's, it, I'm not talking about the Arab world, because for me, this political turmoil extends itself to be more and beyond the Arab world. And hence, this continuation of talking about these speculative projects is only a kind of a failure because somewhere we have failed to create uh, a world that connects to uh, a sphere that is about uh, citizenship, about individualism, about the fissures and the cracks that so many people forgot about and are only interested in the monolithic discourse mm -hmm. and into fundamentalist structures which are binary and which are infiltrating the whole of the Arab world. And I think these pockets of resistance, and I'm not really at all, uh, like, um, I think the imaginary is very important to kind of resist this, uh, uh, this uh, extremist outlook of how we want to run uh, a state within a state that has actually submitted its records to people like Daesh, for example. Okay, so... Daesh, the Islamic State of... The Islamic State, State of uh, ISIS. ISIS. And hence, it is more needed at this point to actually reflect more on our practice at this point. Because imagine all of these cities in the Arab world, imagine what's happening in Cairo, imagine what's happening in Palestine. Palestine became ironically becomes the most stable now, you know? Yeah, because amidst, it's, amidst it's under occupation, what's, yeah. It's under occupation, at least, you know, it's under occupation. It's under the protection of Israel, yeah. you know, so. So, in other words, you know, when you are under the custody of somebody, it means you are safe. So... I mean, not all the Arab world, huh? I mean, this area, this region. Yeah, I mean, we are in Sharjah now, we are yeah, safe. <laughs> okay, you are in Sharjah, but I'm talking about Egypt, I'm talking about yeah, Libya, yeah. I'm talking about Yemen, I'm, I'm talking about Syria, I'm yeah, yeah. talking about all of these countries. Yeah, but it's very interesting what you said about the, creating the civic sphere and how, do you, how did you do it before and how, do you look, how are you looking forward to do it in the next editions of Homeworks, for example? How do you integrate these kind of pockets of resistance within or make a relationship or connections between these pockets of resistance and what you call uh, pockets of resistance and contemporary art. How does it work? This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to push a lot for involving many institutions which are outside the art world, yeah. simply. Yeah. Like institutions like uh, CAFA in Beirut, mm -hmm. institutions like uh, I'm working with Kadir Atiya on, a, uh, on all the works that uh, are because I sit on the board of MASA, which is for this disprivileged communities in Lebanon and to reflect on the notion of these disprivileged communities. What does it mean now? You have two million refugees in Lebanon, okay? You have all of this in, around us in the Arab world. If you are gonna continue 
producing museums, we are going to end up producing more money laundering, okay? We're going to produce more boutiques, and we're, we're going to be producing more art foundations that does not correlate to any converse, social, socio-political conversation around us. Yeah. So for me, it is, it is at least this is a point for us, and I'm very, um, it is a serious invitation to reflect on how we went about in the 90s, went back to point zero to reflect how do we continue forward now. I think this is the time here to think of that. And I think the constellation of all of these people, it's one constellation all over the world. We are thinking of the same question, similar questions. Yeah, and I want to add something here. Um, because of the current situations and what's happening, I mean, uh, now being in London is as scary as being in, uh, you know, God knows where, you know, and uh, being in New York, you know, is as it could be as uh, dangerous at times, you know, or at least psychologically as dangerous, you know. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, with the situation, what's happening now uh, regionally and uh, uh, globally, you know, as uh, Salah was, uh, was, was talking about, you know, what does it mean to be, you know, you know, I mean, I don't look black, but I am black, you know, I'd, uh, I, I come from a Christian family, but I'm Jewish, you know, but, you know, what does this mean? You know, it's a, the, the notions of what you were talking about, uh, museums, for instance, you know, um, for instance, you know, we have this uh, boom, you know, we have almost like, uh, again, like seven, eight uh, museums happening in, Pal in Ramallah now, and it's like, you know, do we really need seven, eight museums now happening? And, you know, the type of museums that are coming up, you know, they are really trying to rewrite and uh, redefine uh, in, a, in a very uh, strange way uh, the notion of what does it mean to be uh, living in, in a context like this, you know, uh, to do a national museum. I mean, do we need really a national museum now? I mean, and, and that is, I mean, our, 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 our context now and uh, the situation that we are facing, the circumstances that we are regionally facing, like, do we really know, are we uh, pro-national, are we anti-national, you know, it's like, and there's this confusion and, you know, we have to tackle uh, these things and we are questioning, you know, like uh, this uh, workshop that we did in Beirut, you know, we are questioning what we have done in the 90s, what we were thinking of, you know, 20 years ago and, uh, and um, how, how, what does it mean right now? Uh, yeah, basically on this one. No, actually, uh, I would like to talk about something here. I think we were talking about this last night in our room with Julia and Yasmina in, in the room discussing these issues of mobility. Like uh, we had a, a conference on Arabic language last week and the social media. And uh, actually, one of the participants who was uh, Kurdish was not allowed entry to Lebanon. And in a way, this is always the case with Palestinians coming to Beirut. I always, you know, it's a story. It's always, um, it's always an event to get all of these people to Beirut. But I think we are reaching the point of fragmentation where it is becoming really almost for many countries, impossible to get anybody to anywhere. And hence, this is the first time for us in Beirut where we did live streaming, and we have almost 2,000, 2,500 people who have attended and have logged into these talks. I think we should really start thinking of this imaginary space, of how to reclaim this imaginary place, because it's going to become more difficult. This kind of resistance, when I think of, for example, all of these platforms like ARG, for example, they hack them, Verso, like, hacks them, they stop, then they take another podium somewhere else. It is, in a way, we're trying to take all of these podiums and try to log in from different portals. Sometimes it doesn't work. So the portal that we are trying to log in is a, a different portal, which is redefining of the boundaries, of the geographical boundaries. And this is something that we should understand. I'm not sure next to Iwak Biennale if we will be able to get like what we got 17 Palestinians to Beirut. And that was for me, it was a statement to say, we're getting the Iwak Biennale 
which is about conservation and conservation of rural parts in Palestine to Beirut to talk in an association that talks about arts, but to say also, in a way, to our participants, because it was part of Home of Space program, that really this insufficiency or redundancy, in a way, is to explore the possibility of doing the same thing in Beirut. Because in the camps, in all of these rural areas, all of this architecture and heritage is often completely neglected. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I just and, and I, really, I really want to go back to this, uh, because I think the, the moment of hosting part of Rewak Biennial in Beirut, for me, personally, it was an exceptional moment. Yeah, well, because what you did, actually, both of you, that you created a kind of, the, what you said, what you call the civic sphere, you really created the impossible, in a way. I mean, art then became much more than having an exhibition uh, space or people, audience coming into an exhibition space, but the fact that Rewak moved part of uh, its activities to Beirut was a kind of exceptional moment, taking into consideration the conditions and the circumstances and the relationship and the political situation. Yeah, and so, I always say, I, I always said, I mean, uh, it was part of a, a workshop, a workshop, a chapter that uh, I was uh, doing with leading. the uh, leading in uh, uh, with the homeworks program, and uh, uh, this idea of that. Uh, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I want you, I want uh, Hor, I want Christine to come uh, to oh. Palestine, and you know, <clears throat> I can almost have everybody here except you know, like uh, Arabs. We they cannot come to Palestine. So, so I said, you know, if they cannot come to Palestine, we'll go to them. If they cannot come to the Biennale, we will go to them. So this idea of looking for an alternative way, and I mean, not to say that, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, this is, uh, you know, this is the form of things, but to, to go and uh, Ruach Biennale, that is, is supposed to happen in Palestine, you know, that it is happening now in Beirut. I mean, it happened in Venice in 2009, you know, and um, uh, I mean, this as a sort of, um, a comment on biennales in general, but uh, now it is uh, dealing with a real issue, you know, where uh, what does it mean to go to Beirut and uh, to really, as, as Christine was saying, to really sort of uh, find alternative ways to engage different practices in our, uh, in the traditional practices. Maybe of, uh, Khalili can tell us a bit more about uh, uh, the concept for the Rewalk Biennial 5, the fifth edition, and why did, you, why did you decide to make it over two years, and why did you decide to take part of it in different places? Well, um, you know, to, 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 to make it, perhaps to talk about this, it's, it's, um, it's best to just uh, perhaps to read something here, you know, with, you know uh, just a little paragraph uh, from the statement of the Ben Ali, you know, where, you know, it, 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 and I uh, quote a part of the statement, with its concrete political outlook and its durational discursive approach, Ruach has always challenged what a Ben Ali can be, in a sense that Ruach is a... Uh, is a, an architectural uh, conservation revitalization institution uh, 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 set up, and um, it's dealing with what a is supposed to deal with, you know, not necessarily just architecture, you know, but it's a conservation and the uh, different aspects of conservation. And it, it goes, you know, at this time the fifth Ruach uh, Biennale will span an entire two years, beginning in June 2014 and ending in May 2016. And here it is this, what does it mean to do an event that doesn't, you know, not necessarily takes place every two years, what does it mean to work in the negative space of a Biennale? Uh, and uh, here again, it, it, you know, it says uh, from June uh, 2014 to May 2016. So its condition is chronic. We refer to it as a chronic condition as opposed to sporadic, you know. Uh, a chronic condition from the Greek chronos time and uh, here is this, this element of time, is persistent and enduring. There's something about the two-year cycle that strikes a chord here, you know, again. Two years is part of a relationship before things get harder. And it's, it's something, this private, sort of intimate type of uh, relationship that you create with the audience, that you create with the, with the public. And, but it's also the standard warranty for consumer products, you know, in a, in a sense. It is almost the, the average sum of consumer products. And it's in reference to 
this this production modes, con uh, production consumerism, and what biennales and or so, sort of like every city is not a city if it doesn't have a biennale, you know, in a sense, you know. So it it it, it is, has it has to do with that, you know. You are not a city if you don't have, a, for instance, a, a Frangeri building, you know, anymore. You know, not a major uh, city, you know. Uh, so um, in in our case, it's uh, the Rouaq Biennale is unusually enmeshed with its context. A two-year cycle is worthy. It, it can be an experiment anywhere. I mean, it has uh, sort of been experimented in Taipei, sort of, uh, which it did really get to, you know people probably more are, are familiar with the with the uh, Berlin 2012 uh, manifesto 2006 with uh, uh, May Abu Dhab and uh, uh, Anton Vidocq at that, that, that time. And um, uh, but the idea of chronic resonates differently where in, in Palestine, as do notions of sustainability, persistent or borrowed time. To even mention Gaza, as I remember, is to invoke an unimaginably, unimaginably violent two-year cycle in its own right. If Biennales always produce tensions between autonomy and history, uh, art and language, these notions mean something very different when the terms at hand are colonialism or ethnic cleansing. So it, it is, Really, I mean, we were planning to do the Biennale, and all of a sudden, this attack on Gaza happened. So what do you do? I mean, people are telling you, you are doing a Biennale. You're going to be producing uh, exhibitions, activities, cultural activities, and this thing is happening in Gaza. It's like, how dare you, in a sense. So what do you do? So these, the, the, these terms of cultural production, engagement with the public, how do you engage with the public, you know, in an event that, for instance, you know, when you are under occupation, it is completely, you know, and the region now is, in, it's completely enmeshed with, with all these things. It's no more just a Palestinian experience, you know. I, I mean, I see Christine, for instance, more Palestinian than I am, you know, because she talks more about the issues that uh, uh, concerns uh, everyday life, you know, as as if uh, you know, you know, uh, it is uh, as if she's almost living under occupation. You know, and uh, so these things uh, change meaning. You know, it's uh, I mean, uh, you, you, I mean, you go for instance, and not to demean or to uh, to be critical about uh, European biennales, or you know, some of them are uh, you know are great. You know, I participate in, in in a lot of them. You know, but for some reason, you know, it is safe to say, you know, we're going to have Berlin Biennale in two years. And you know, okay, they might have a problem with budget. <laughs> of course. No, no. In in the region here, you know, how 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 can you think of doing a biennale in Syria now, or in Iraq? That you know, you've done this research, you know, with the biennale in in Iraq. You know, yeah. How can you think? Yeah. of doing yeah, that yeah, yeah. In, in a situation. Yeah, like of course, there are situations where it's impossible. Yeah. Or is it uh, a priority, you know? Mm. Mm. Or, you know, as uh, Christine would say, you know, maybe, uh, you know, engagement with L LGBT issues now or uh, uh, issues or uh, yeah. situations yeah. would be more interesting or, you know, yeah. perhaps, uh, you know, yeah. issues of this and Maybe you say something about the, uh, the relationship between homeworks and time also. How, how does it work? Do you have precise time? I mean, you start it, I mean, why it's there's no time. sometimes there's, two years, sometimes three years? There's no time. If you're going to stick to the, like, the clock and it's... Never, never homeworks. I remember. I it never happened on the same time that they announced you know, it would happen because one time, you know, uh, you know, remember, uh, the last three times. The first time I met Khalil, it was in 2002, he came to Beirut, there, was, uh, there were demonstrations, 20,000 people outside in the streets because was, uh, of, uh, of Gaza, and, and, then, and, then and then you had Arafat, and then you had Iraq, invasion of Iraq, 2003, and then you had the third one, you had uh, assassination of Hariri, Okay, and then, and then the uh, 2008 when Hezbollah raided uh, Beirut, uh, invaded the, the city, and then uh, when uh, the last one, there wasn't any political event, there was the volcano ashes. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. we had to hear out everybody from all over the world. People coming from the States had to come stop in Cairo to come to Beirut. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's not like a political disaster, it's a supernatural disaster. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is if you really don't converse with this. Mm. And of course, sometimes you cry. Yeah. You stop and you cry and you yeah. say, what, you know? And then the other day you have to stand up and say, okay, this is what it is. What can I do? If you cannot really embed yourself in such of a volatile structure, you absolutely cannot really work in this realm. Yeah, you know, and I think what, what, the, what, we, what we are trying to say, or at least what, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, and Christine, I, I can read her very well uh, now, uh, and all, all, always, you know, but uh, it's that is, it's not just we come from a, a very special and unique place that we face these circumstances. You know, now it is becoming very evident that this is, this is an international and global issue. I mean, what, what we have been facing and what we are facing regionally, you know, this is whether it's going to affect the rest of the world now, in, in next year or the year after, now we are realizing that these issues, they are fundamental issues, whether they are uh, uh, human rights, whether they are you know, migration, whether they are uh, extremism, whether, you know, they are they, with censorship, you know, whatever, they, they are really uh, human concerns, you know, international concerns. And for some, uh, you know, at some point, we, we really were made to think that they are just about us. And it's not just about us, you know. We are not really special people which is being under occupation, for instance, you know, or, you know, that we make, we, we should be treated in a special way, or, you know, we have special circumstances, how we deal things. What we, we are trying to say here, you know, what I'm, you know, is that, you know, these, Global issues, you know, concerns everybody, you know, and the environment concerns us all, you know, so, and, you know, when freedom of expression and uh, without referring to uh, the latest events, you know, it concerns us all. So, I mean, when I was talking about, you know, whether we are, you know, because we are under occupation, we don't have mobility, you know, freedom of mobility, freedom of expression, wah, wah, so on and so forth, you know, now the whole world is, is, is really tackling these kind of issues. And I think biennales or events of this nature, contemporary art must deal, is dealing with, is trying to tackle it these issues. It is already issues. dealing, of yeah. course. I mean, it's, what you are it doing is dealing is with these dealing issues. With yeah. 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 And uh, uh, I, I want to go back to the civic sphere because that's, I think, very important. You love the civic uh, sphere. No, I really think, I, I think what you did in... Uh, it was really exceptional moment to have all these Palestinian and part of Riwak Bayani in Beirut. Can, can you give us, uh, because I, I also the Ashkel, Ashkel Alwan as an association, you started in the 90s where, with events that you were actually reclaiming the city after the war. So you had different projects in public, in public spaces. spaces yeah. And I think, I think it's not something new that you are creating this civic sphere. Of course, now maybe it's more articulated, more uh, obvious, but in the past, you, you started actually in the 90s, slowly, yeah. right? It's a, yeah. It was a group of friends who were reclaiming the city. It wasn't really Ashkel Alwan or me. It was uh, a number of people that we were working together, right, trying to understand after the effect of uh, 20 years of war, how do we continue? And this is where, you know, the first uh, three projects were one, the first one was in a garden where a public hanging took place. The second one was um, on, uh, in, in Corniche. Uh, no, the second one was in Jnainet uh, Siufi. Uh, and the third one was uh, in, on Corniche. And the fourth one was on Hamra Street. But actually, Picking up, taking the cue from what is the meaning of a public space and creating homeworks, which is, um, it's an arena for a semi-public space. And to actually rethink of all of these histories that we are trying to work on and to actually, uh, you know, think of this verbal, uh, you know, commitment because uh, we are, uh, in a way, trying to do this uh, homework of looking 
at what went wrong, at least in Lebanon, with the civic sphere, I'm not going to talk about the war in particular, we actually did not go that far. And in a way, they just repeat these utterances of um, uh, redundancy keep repeating themselves because we haven't really talked about that. We haven't really talked about all of these people who exist in Lebanon because for me, I don't know what it means to be Lebanese. I, what it means to be somebody who's French, who's in Beirut, or somebody who's Palestinian, or somebody, and this is where the practice of Ashkel al Wan comes in that these people, you know, should not be really about what you connect to institu institutionalization, but to connect to these people who are trying to understand their close proximity. Because we lost the touch with our geopolitical representation. And the geopolitical representation now is in constant fluxus because what it means, all of these borders, what it means to actually circumcise this relationship to your own personal space. You don't have a space anymore. When you walk out, you want to talk about your right as a woman you're right as a mother, you're right about changing things, you have somebody who cuts your head, okay? Whether you're a man or a woman or a child or whatever. So this war for me is about actually subduing all of the private spheres, meaning the private sphere as a civic discourse. And it's about actually eradicating all the minorities. And the minorities for me, when you lose your minorities, whether it's all of the people that are we're working within, whether it's you know all the religious representation in Lebanon, all the people who have are disprivileged communities and they are attacked, uh, then you cannot have a civic discourse because you are actually only putting the discourse of the victor and the victor how he wants to write history. I'm interested in knowing the history or slash the histories from the people who are minorities and who are not victors. Yeah, of course. And hearing this, of course, we remember all what happened in Iraq and Syria lately with all the Christian minorities are leaving or the Yazidis are killed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I recall, uh, I mean, a discussion I had with uh, some people, you know, one of the museums that they're doing is called the Yasser Arafat Museum, quote unquote, the, uh, the uh, Museum of Resistance. You know, it's like, really? You know, it's like, you know, you know, really, Yasser Arafat. I mean, not not that I have, you know, I'm, I'm not being critical about uh, God bless his soul. You know, but I'm not critical about Yasser Arafat. This is not the point here. But, you know, it's like, um, we, it's, I mean, it's like, oh, Yazidis in uh, Iraq now. It's like, uh, you know, can can we give some credit to this kind of resistance? You know, this kind of resistance. I mean, this notion of resistance and uh, this, uh, you know, it's no more the the sort of copyright of one person or another. I mean, there are communities, you know, all over, you know, this, that really, I mean, facing a situation that uh, redefine uh, these uh, concerns, these issues, and at the same time should, must be inherent in uh, our practice as artists. And and when we, we think of me, I mean, and I mean, uh, the like uh, the binary here, the past, the present, and the uh, the possible. You yes, know, the, the possible. There's this this uh, yeah. There's this optimistic. There's this, yeah. I mean, there is this uh, these concerns that uh, yeah. There should be a global concern. Yeah, yeah. I think we are running out of time. No, it's like please. six minutes to. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe people would like to ask you some questions or before we start with the next presentation. Comments? Yes, please. Hi, my name's Trish. I'm from Australia. It's not a question, it's just a comment. I'd like to thank you both very much for the best talks I've ever heard and the topics that you uh, approached, you did with eloquence and courage, I think. So thank you very much. Shukran Jazilam. can happen over the coffee breaks, etc. But yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Khalil. Thank you, Christine. It was really great. Thanks for your time.